G'day Dean, uh, this is a recording of um, how I'm using GIMP, uh, GNU uh, Image Manipulation Program, I think it stands for. I think I prefer to call it Graphics and Image Manipulation Program, but uh, strictly speaking, GNU Image Manipulation Program. And it's a free open source um, image editor. And uh, what I'm creating for Dean is um, just straight up simple image stacks. That's just um, a series of images named 01, 02, 03 for him to add audio to and then his students can play these image uh, stacks on their PDAs and whatnot. It's a bit of an experiment we're working with. So when you open GIMP it, it has multiple windows. The first window it opens with is, is this one and it's just the toolbar. And when you open a file, if you go file, new or open an existing one, it'll open up in a separate window like this one. And uh, what I do is start with a background image like one of Dean Ining here. And I don't know, I'm just fiddling around with it still at the moment, but Dean's provided me with a bunch of files that he would like to use. And so the, um, this resource we're creating is for session two expected yield factor. And uh, they, are actually, they were actually layers, just image layers that uh, Dean sent me through images of that titling and I just added them in as layers. So I'll show you how to open up the layers. And it's under dialogue, strangely enough and if you drop down, there it is, layers. It will open up another window. We'll put this one over here and we'll make Dean's image layer a bit smaller so we can see what's going on. And let's have a look at these layers. Listening to Dean's audio track, I've just created, this is the only one visible at the moment, I've just created a background image for the introduction. Now later on he talks about a chart, and so I just plonk the chart there as a separate layer. <clears throat> I just opened a separate file for the, f for the chart, copied the image, pasted it, and resized it. And there's the resizing tool there. And in that, when he was talking about the chart, he was talking about a particular area of the chart. So I added this layer here. And that was just using the selection box. I drew a box around here. And then there's this tool, which is a fill with gradient color. And so I clicked that and I chose the red color, double clicking that, chose red. And uh, then you just drag a line in the um, selection area and it will automatically create this. But then I went over to layers and I selected the layer that that was on. That's this one. And you notice here, the mode is multiply. There's all these different modes in here. You go through them and it changes the look of the layer. That's how I got those kind of red tints on Dean there and things like that. I just went through them until I found the one I wanted. And that makes the underneath layer, which is the chart, visible through the, uh, the red tonal um, variation of whatever. So I did that the same for the next layer. And so in the sequence, that one will switch off and this one will switch on. Then Dean starts talking about specifics. Um, adding up, I think it was adding up that column. And I'm, I'm sort of wary that I think that the people in the PDA, we're using the PDAs won't be able to see the detail of this image. So I zoomed it in. I just went back to the original table, copied a section of it, and pasted it in there. So it's a little bit of a zoom in. And again, highlighted the column we're talking about. So all of these layers just switch on as we get to different parts in the track. Now the problem I had is that it was difficult to kind of get them to align up. So you can see there's a faint little bit of blue of the background layer coming through there. Now I, see, I can see this is going to be a continuous problem, especially when we get to the point where we're going to actually add a screen um, grab of a calculator and go through all the steps of the calculator. It's going to be kind of difficult to um, to position that. So I added a white border on the top layer, and this will always be on the top layer. So I switch off all the others. All it is is there. You can see it is a white border for this content to display under. Yeah, you can see the white border there, and that'll just keep it a nice, neat edge. Um, to create that border, they're probably an easier way, but I just used this selection box again. I drew one big box on the layer, filled it white with the fill tool, 
and then drew another box on the inside with the selection tool and literally just um, edit cut control X I think that'll do that's um, a little bit of an intro on how to open the layer so that's in the dialogues layers and then it's uh, a matter of thinking in terms of a sequence with the next item in the sequence to be on the top layer and so um, if you think a bit like PowerPoint layers is a little bit like PowerPoint in that the net layer on top is the next PowerPoint slide and then you come to exporting each picture so when you when you say we want to export this one what you do is you go up to file save as and you call it a JPEG JPEG and JPG and then export that anyway I've got the feeling that there's a fair bit that I've covered there and might be a bit hard to follow so I'll just stop the recording altogether and uh, hopefully it helps a little bit